Hashem. Казалось бы, за моей спиной обычное заграждение приграничной полосы. Бетонные плиты, и на них колючая проволока. Ну а за ними, соответственно, полоса нейтральная, здесь Сирия, а там Турция. И все бы было хорошо, если бы еще три месяца назад вот эти холмы, находящиеся сейчас якобы на турецкой территории, не принадлежали бы Сирии. В ходе подготовки операции «Щит Ефрата» турецкая армия прошла около полутора километров вглубь сирийской территории и начала устанавливать вот эти заградительные стены. Сейчас наша съемочная группа находится на очередном участке сирийско-турецкой границы на севере курдского кантона Афринс. За моей спиной можно увидеть результаты очередных турецких претензий на территорию Сирии и на территорию кантона. Белая извилистая стена – это новая пограничная линия, которую турки протянули буквально несколько месяцев назад. Прямо за ней на дистанции иногда в 200, а иногда и в 1000 метров проходит старая пограничная линия. Вот так турецкое государство претендует на территорию Кантона, а также на территорию Сирии. They're not on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have new player in this region. Okay, new, uh, I mean, uh, it was Turkish intervention. Mm -hmm. And nobody speak about this now. Like yeah. nothing happened. Uh, what's your opinion about the role of Turkey in this war and about this intervention? If we start from today, it's invasion. Invasion. This incursion is invasion. Whether a small part or a big, large part of, of the Syrian territory is invasion uh, against international law, against the moral, against the sovereignty of Syria. Uh, but what do the, Turkish, the Turks want from this invasion, regardless of the uh, mask that they wear yeah. to cover their intention, real intentions? Uh, they wanted to wash, uh, whitewash uh, their real intention that they used to support ISIS. And you think they don't, they don't support now? No, they still support, but they came, they say we are fighting ISIS. We are, we are going it's to It's ridiculous. Have... When they tell, it's ridiculous. Of course they tell, right. we are fighting with ISIS. They made ISIS. Exactly. They, they made ISIS. They supported ISIS. They give them all the logistical support and they allow them to sell our oil uh, uh, through their border, through their territory, with the participations of Erdogan's son in his uh, coterie. They, they all, all of them were involved in, uh, in, this, in the relation with the ISIS. All the world knows this. But With this invasion, they wanted to change the package of mm -hmm. ISIS to talk, to talk about the new moderate forces, which are mm -hmm. the same grassroots of ISIS. They move it from ISIS. They say ISIS were defeated in some areas because the Turkish bombardment and the troops and their proxies in Syria expelled mm -hmm. uh, ISIS from certain areas. Just a uh, play. It's just a play for the rest of the world. Uh, the second one, because he wanted to uh, support al-Nusra. In they want to support mm -hmm. And he wanted to, I mean, Erdogan in particular wanted to have a role in the solution in Syria. It doesn't matter what, what kind of role. He felt that he's isolated for the last year because of ISIS. But he still, he still feels like Syria is Osman Empire. For him it's, uh, exactly. it's is just a, his territory. Uh, his, uh, he has, his ideology is a mixture between the Brotherhood ideology, which is violent and extremist, and the Ottoman Uh, empire or the Ottoman Sultanate. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think with, the, with these two uh, ideologies, he can make a mixture to control this region. That's why he supported the Muslim Brotherhood in every country, including uh, Syria. You're, you're right. After Russian plane uh, was shot down by the talks, Russia stopped relationships with Turkey. Uh, now, after, okay, his excuses, we again, it's looked like again friendship, tourism, diplomatic relationships, everything. Uh, uh, Putin uh, called this uh, knife in the back when this plane uh, was beaten. 
by, by the talks. Do you think maybe we, are, we Russians make mistake uh, to trust uh, Erdogan again after his betrayal? No, actually, I look positively to this relation. You look positively? Yeah, positively. Why? Why? Uh, we are talking about two parties. We take into consideration that these two parties, uh, again, on, they, they don't see eye to eye. They are uh, in different positions. Uh, Russia based its policy on the international law, uh, respecting the sovereignty of other states, and uh, understanding the repercussions of the terrorism prevailing in, in, anywhere in the world. While uh, the other party, Turkish party, uh, based his, uh, his policy on the ideology of Muslim Brotherhood, they don't respect the sovereignty of Syria, and they supported the terrorists. So you can see their polarization. Each one is in the, uh, exactly or uh, completely the opposite side. So uh, through this rapprochement, let's say, between Russia and uh, Turkey, the only hope that we have as Syria that Russia can make some changes in the Turkish policy. This is mm -hmm. our hope. And I'm sure that, what that this is the first uh, goal of the Russian diplomacy toward Turkey these days in order to decrease the damage of the messing up with the Syrian territory by the Turkish uh, uh, government. Uh, I hope they can convince them that they have to stop supporting terrorists, stop allowing the flow of terrorists and money for those terrorists but where, through their Erdogan, borders. But Erdogan, this terrorist, it's instrument of influence. He will never, he will never refuse from this instrument. It's, it's his people. Uh, and if he will try to fight with them, they will start to fight with him. I mean, he, it's a big risk for him to refuse from sponsor, uh, sponsorship of terrorism. It's a big risk for his power. Yeah. That's why I didn't say the Russian will change his policy. I said they will decrease uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the damage because he, he I mean, uh, somebody who belonged to the Muslim Brotherhood, violent uh, and extremist and uh, fanatic ideology, cannot be a straight person, to be frank and to be realistic. So what you're, saying, what you're talking about is very realistic. I agree with you 100%, but at the end, you have to try. You try. If you, if you change 1%, that's good. If you change 10%, then that, that's good. You don't have to have the full uh, change, and we don't have this uh, hope. We don't uh, raise our expectations a lot, especially with somebody like Erdogan and his uh, uh, clique. Uh, but any change in this moment, that will be good. And that, uh, this hope that we have, I think, the same that the Russian officials have this time through this relation. And I think this is the wisdom of the movement mm -hmm. uh, of, of, uh, of the Russian uh, government mm -hmm. toward the uh, Turkish government, not because they trust this government, but they need good relation with the people. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's com completely reason. correct.